What's up, MMA fans? It's Tudor Leonte from Short Dog here, and today I have the pleasure to talk with UFC light heavyweight contender Modestas Bukoskos. Uh, hello, Modestas, and welcome back on Short Dog. How are you? Hey, man, how's it going? Yes, thank you so much for having me on, mate. I really appreciate it. And uh, I also, I really appreciate you giving us a little bit of uh, your time. Um, my first question here for you is, how are you spending your summer, of course, in addition uh, to training? Summer in training? Um, just literally, it's, it's just everything just goes on as normal, really. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to, you're trying to fix uh, certain things that you wanted to do in your game, you know, improve areas of your game that... Uh, that were once maybe not so good. Uh, I've had a couple of changes in my training camp and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been making big changes from like literally since I came back from my last fight. Uh, I've been looking at, you know, obviously trying to make the, those big improvements um, to my game, to my fighting and everything. And yeah, just been working away until I finally got the call for a fight. So uh, yeah, everything's been going, uh, going into place very well for me. Um, can I ask you to, you know, to elaborate on those improvements you have made on in your uh, training camps, or would you prefer not to disclose it? Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. So um, I was with a team um, based in Northampton uh, earlier on, um, and I've been with them for a very long time, and you know. They've, um, you know, helped me out so much in my career. They, 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 they've done me a hell of a world of good. I had, to, I had to good, really good coaches and everything like that. But, you know, there's times in your career where uh, you need, you know, you can't stay stagnant. You need something to, to be able to bring out the best of your abilities, to be able to uh, bring out your, your best talents and to be able to use it the best way. And uh, that meant that I had to make a move um, to, to a gym called Team Titan, um, which is uh, also, which is based more in London, which is actually closer for me. Um, so obviously, you know, logistically it worked out a lot better. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, they added things to my game that I feel are going to make me even more vicious and, you know, be able to um, make me, they, I feel like they're helping me bring out my skill set even better because at this, you know, in this game, you know, the skill set, the discrepancy in skill set between fighters, you know, in the UFC is very small. It's just, you know, more about how you're using it and how you'll be able to apply it when you go out there and fight. And uh, they've definitely been helping me to do so. And I'm very thankful for that. I know that you have a fight coming in September, but after that, will you go on vacation? Um, <laughs> for me, I've, you know, as long as I'm not banged up and everything, I literally want to get back in there and fight again. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm really enjoying and loving this fight game. So, uh, you know, I think time off and stuff like that will come when, when I think that I've earned it, when I think that I've earned it, you know, obviously I'll, I'll probably have my week to, you know, party, you know, maybe drink a little, you know, just enjoy yourself a little bit. But, uh, after that, you know, I kind of, I want to, I want to get back into the, uh, I want to get back into the fight game. I want to keep improving because, you know, you've got a very short space of time to, to do this whole fight career. So, uh, you know, I want to make the most of it. So, you know, until, until I feel like I've really, really deserved it and really made a statement in the division, I, I don't think I'll, I'll really be taking too many holidays. Okay, okay. Fair enough, sir. Fair enough. Uh, you are coming off a narrow split decision loss against uh, Mihal Olechuk at UFC 260. The majority of the media members, almost the unanimity, to be honest, scored the fight in your favor. I would like to ask your thoughts on that fight first. Yeah, so um, I have actually watched that fight back uh, quite a lot of times uh, just to see, you know, where the scoring may have gone, uh, you know, more to his favor and stuff like that. And if you're looking from a strategic aspect and things that I needed to work on and improve, uh, of course, I'm looking at it from the fact of, okay, these are things that I could have improved, but... If you're looking at statistically, I mean, I'm pretty sure I landed more significant strikes in every round, even the round that every judge fought a loss, which was the last round. And the 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 round that they then gave, the two judges gave uh, to Oleg Shaychuk was the first round. And it, in my opinion, I mean, the first round was where I, I probably looked the best. After seeing that fight like a load of times, 
I think it was that first round that really solidified for me that win. And the fact that they did not see it that way was really quite bizarre for me, you know, especially when that, in that round in particular, the strike, the significant strike differential was the most. That's where I landed the most significant strikes in comparison to my opponent. And to, for them to give it to him that first round, I thought, yeah, like I say, that, that was a bit weird. But, um, you know, I definitely thought I did enough to win the fight. And, you know, obviously the media and, and stuff like that, uh, they, they all agreed on that. But at the end of the day, uh, it is what it is, you know, uh, the, the result, you know, as, as uh, Max Holloway would say, it is what it is, you know, it's <laughs> like, you know, what, 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 what the result was on paper is the only thing that matters. Uh, doesn't matter how, you, you know, sort of how you fought or which way it could have went, or, you know, a lot of people thinking this or that the result stands that it's a loss. So uh, at the end of the day, all I can do is learn from it, take what I can from it and move forward. And to be honest with you, if I had won that fight, I wouldn't have made the particular adjustments I made uh, now. So I'm actually grateful for that. It's uh, it's given me a new lease of life, and I'm looking forward to to show that on my next fight. So we can expect uh, an improved version of Modestas Bukowskas in the next fight. Is that right? A hundred percent, mate. A hundred percent. I definitely feel like I'm going to be the most dangerous that I've ever been, and I can't wait. You are scheduled to clash with Khalil uh, uh, Rantri on September the 4th. Uh, what do you expect from your next opponent? Do you know what? He is actually, he's, a, he's an amazing opponent, a big name. Uh, you know, uh, he was on the ultimate, it's funny, he was on the ultimate fighter when I was literally, I think it, I, I've, I just turned pro. I was, I was really quite young and I, so I remember watching him on TV and remember my dad, me and my dad watching him. And I've always, you know, looked up to him. Uh, I've always thought he's a very explosive fighter, very entertaining. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was amazing, obviously, to get that match up. And uh, what can I expect is for him to be very explosive and very powerful. Um, and, uh, yeah, for it to be a very exciting fight. I can't wait to go and test myself and, and, and really put my skill set out there and uh, and show that to everyone. There were some rumors that the card should have been in London. Uh, did the UFC tell you anything about that? Yeah, so, yeah, it was actually originally scheduled to be in London. Um, nothing was ever really 100% confirmed. It was always that's where it's planned, but it, you know, in, in their eyes, anything could have happened. And yeah, it, for the longest time, we all thought it was going to be in London. And then literally, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was then announced that uh, it was going to be in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, it, it, for, for a long time, I thought obviously I was going to fight in my hometown only until recently. Like I say, maybe within the last two or three weeks. But obviously with the COVID pandemic and stuff like that, you, you never really know what's going to happen with these things. Uh, I guess the answer here is pretty obvious, but I have to ask you the same. Would you like to, to fight you know, in London one day? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, I feel that in order for me to earn my right to be able to fight in front of my hometown crowd, I've got to go and put this next man away. I've got to go out and put on the best performance of my life. I've got to really show what I'm truly made of. Uh, if I can go and do that and 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 do it to, to the best of my ability, I feel those things are all going to be within my grasp in the future. So for me, I've got to go out and earn that. But um, definitely once I, once I get past Khalil Roundtree, uh, yeah, I, I definitely would be looking to, uh, forward to that in the future. And of course, we are talking about fighting in London in the UFC since you fought already. Uh, you know, in Cage Warriors, you had plenty of fights in in uh, in London. Mm -hmm. um, do you miss, you know, having the you know the hometown uh, supporters cheering for uh, for you? Yeah, I mean, I definitely miss uh, I definitely miss having a crowd, man. I mean, I've I've Ooh. fought in front of no crowd now for my last uh, for my last three fights. So obviously, it's as normal as it is for me just to go out and fight and do my thing and not really care about having a crowd like you always obviously miss that sense of like electricity and like you know just like people's energies and stuff like that so and you know imagine fighting in front of your hometown crowd 20,000 people I mean what could be more electric than that so uh, obviously that is something that um, I, I, I'm still uh, longing to, to, to feel and experience but I know that's within my future I just got to keep doing my thing, keep my head down 
and uh, and go and win this next fight. And like I say, those things are going to be in the future. So uh, as much as I, I really want it, I know that those things are, are coming in my future. Uh, has the uh, COVID-19 situation uh, improved in the United Kingdom? Um, it kind of did, but now it's, I don't, it's, it's sort of like you can't really... You, you can't really say has it improved on. I mean, the cases are still relative. Well, relatively, they're really quite high. Um, the deaths haven't gone up dramatically or anything like that. I think they've gone up massively in summer uh, when, you know, when COVID just came about. It was like a like thousand, which was really quite bad. And now it's dropped to, but even having a hundred deaths, you know, a, a day from COVID is, is not a good sign either. So um, I don't know. It's It's sort of, It seems like there, there, there's been improvements and then, you know, most people are vaccinated now. But, you know, at the, at the current time, we still don't know, you know, whether it's going to really dramatically improve or what they're going to do or, or what's going to happen. But in terms of lifestyle, it seems like everything is going back more to normal. Like, you know, people are going out. A lot of people are not wearing masks, although I am myself. Um, so... Uh, you know, it seems like there's a bit more normality, um, but, you know, it's yet to be seen whether um, everything will will be like fully back on properly. So, uh, yeah, obviously, there's still COVID and protocols in, in, in place for people to exit the country and come back. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens, really. Sir, uh, I noticed that on uh, your uh, socials, uh, social media, you publish a lot of uh, photos with uh, your dad. Uh, do you usually train together? Um, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> he sort of does a little bit. He's, he's my main pad holder. Um, okay. And, you know, he's my, he's my head coach as well. You know, he does all the strategy along with my other coach as well, Mickey. So, uh, you know, um, he's like, you know, he does my strength and conditioning as well. So in terms of me actually doing grappling with him, he, you know, he always tells me that obviously he would love to do all the grappling stuff with me so he could show me more and, you know, move around. And, and 100%, I agree. Obviously, if he would be able to, that would be absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, age catches up with all of us. So, you know, after all the years of him, you know, competing uh, in, in high level sports himself, uh, you know, obviously that's taken a toll on his body. So if that's anything to tell me what I'm going to be like when I go into my fifties, you know, obviously <laughs> I know that my body's going to be pretty messed up as well, but, um, but yeah, now, nah, I mean, he's still incredibly energetic, you know, when it comes to training me, there's, there's a, there's a passion that he brings that, that, you know, that you, you don't, often see you know what i mean that's why we've got such an amazing connection you know we we get on so well and then you know he trains and puts literally puts his heart and soul into everything i mean he's still when we do our swimming workouts he still swims so sometimes he, he swims even better than me you know but uh because he, he used to be a national level swimmer and stuff like that so uh yeah we move around a little bit but it's more he's putting more his efforts to train me as opposed to, you know, be able to grapple or wrestle with me or stuff like that. He just helps me with my drills, does all that kind of stuff, like, you know, uh, coordinates all my training. So, um, yeah, in terms of like actually doing wrestling and stuff like that, not so much, but everything else. And of course, yeah, he's, he's fully into it. Modestas, before I let you go, do you have any last message? All I've got to say is that um, get ready for the Baltic Gladiator to go out there and literally put everything out on the line. I'm going in in, the, in this mentality, uh, kill or be killed. You know what I mean? I'm going in there with where, where, like I'm going in there with the mentality that I don't care if I die. Like I'm literally, I'm going there and put everything out on the line. So everyone can expect it to be an absolutely explosive show. And I've got to thank uh, all my family, uh, all my friends, and obviously all my team members and my sponsors. Um, everyone has been a massive help and an inspiration for me to get to where I am. And yeah, roll on, roll on September 4th. It's going to be a good one. Thank you again for your time. Best of luck with your upcoming fight. And hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. Nice one, brother. Thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it, man. I hope you have a lovely evening. You too. Have a nice one. Bye-bye. Right, nice one. Bye-bye.